Hello and welcome back to Girl Ascending. So today we're going to be looking at the Minor Arcana, looking at the Suit of Cups. Okay, so we're going to be starting off through the Suit of Cups by looking, of course, at the King of Cups. And this is a card that is really all about emotion, love and relationships. And indeed, the Suit of Cups follows all of those um, factors as well. We're just going to zoom in a little closer so that we can get a better look at him as it's a bit sunny today. So when we're thinking about the King of Cups in the upright position, what we're really talking about is emotional stability. Uh, this is a card coming through as someone very empathetic, a peacemaker, and it's really that idea of channeled kindness as well. So it's mastering the power of love and the way that love can be transformative and can hold so much power over our lives as well. And it's a very harmonizing card. Um, so if this comes up when we're thinking about family or home life, it's that idea that there is stability, uh, that there are forces coming into play to make things as peaceful as possible. This is also a card that calls in on your own kindness, on your own ability to channel the power of love as well. And when we're looking at the card visually, we can see lots of blue on the uh, King of Cups robe. We can obviously see his uh, uh, large cup or goblet that he is holding and we can see the symbolism of waves and fishes everywhere there's obviously the water underneath his throne and then there's a little fish sort of brocade right in the center of his robe as well like a brooch and then at the side on the uh, bottom left hand side we can see a little fish head coming into view as well and it's this idea of calm in a turbulent sea um, that we can really see that there's that marriage of the subconscious coming through to help us balance our emotions and in the uh, reverse position uh, the king of cups is all about unstable emotions and that disconnection from ourselves from our heart but it can also be a sign of emotional manipulation as well we then move on from the king of cups of course to the queen of cups and when we're looking at this card, we really want to be getting even deeper into our emotions. And it's that real idea of mastery over our emotional intelligence. So whilst the King of Cups is all about that deep sense of love and the power that love has, the Queen of Cups is more that emotional side of it as well. So it's about compassion, it's about nurturing. And as with all of the queens and all of the suits, there's that real idea of being a spiritual visionary as well, something very spiritual coming into the upright meaning as well. Um, so if you're looking at this card and thinking about the future, uh, you could prepare yourself for the idea that there is going to be some deep emotional uh, changes, that you're going to have to have greater awareness in how your relationships are affecting the wider course of your life. Um, if you have this in a present position, it can be an indication that you yourself are highly intuitive, or um, if it's going to be a past uh, pull that this card comes up in, the idea that perhaps you needed to show compassion, not just to others, but also to yourself as well. And when we have this card in the reverse position, it's that idea of emotional instability and disconnecting from our own personal intuition. And it's the idea that we need to get back in touch with that emotional center, that central core. And when we look at the cup that the Queen of Cups is holding, she actually has one that holds angel wings as well. She's got her feet literally in the water, not just on the throne. So we've got that real idea of the deep intuition and we can see we've got the sea and fishes as well. We can see the little cherubs on her throne. So it's that real idea of connecting with the harmony that is inside of us, that subconscious knowing to help us to connect more deeply in the relationships in our lives. And next, we're going to be looking at the Knight of Cups. Um, so as we've spoken about previously, all the knights in the suit of the Minor Arcana are all about that idea of forward action and movement and things progressing. Um, so it's that real positive affirmation that if you're thinking about doing something particularly related to the heart or to emotions, that this is a very positive yes sign. 
if you're having the Knight of Cups come up in the upright position. Um, and it's still that idea that we're connecting with our intuition as well, but we're actually being moved by whatever we're intuitively feeling in order to take further action. And we're doing it from our heart. Um, so it's taking all that power that we saw with the King of Cups, all that intuition that we saw with the Queen of Cups, and really translating that into some kind of forward action as well. And this is actually quite a romantic card, even though there's perhaps that sort of echo back to say something like the death card in the major arcana with this card, we can really feel that there is that forward um almost like a suitor on his way to propose. We can see the cherub wings in his armor coming out of, of the cap. And then we can see that there is clearly water in the distance that we're going to have to cross. And we can see all the little fishes on his tabard as well. And then when we're thinking about this card coming up in the blocked position, it's the idea that we are ignoring the emotion. So whenever um, the cards of the cups in the minor arcana come up in the blocked position, I always think of it as the cups are emptying out. So it's that idea of all the emotions are being released in an unhealthy way, that things are empty, that we are not connecting with our emotions, that we are feeling very disconnected from our heart, from our passion and from our true inspirations. So moving on from the Knight of Cups, we're now coming to the Page of Cups. And as with all the pages of the Minor Arcana, it's that idea of a new stage or a fresh start. And when we're thinking about the Page of Cups, it's about a new emotional start. So it may not even be something that's physically happening or something that's happening externally. It's a new emotional start. So although that could signify something like a new relationship, it can also signify something like a new relationship with yourself, um, where you're really getting in touch with your emotions and you're learning to um, connect more deeply with yourself and you're listening to your intuition on a more deeper level. And if we actually look at the card visually, we can see that in the page of cups, cup, there is a little fish popping out and speaking to him. And it's that idea of intuitively connecting to yourself and to the messages that are coming through either from uh, yourself subconsciously or even from, from the universe. You're picking up on those um, signs and those uh, symbols that are coming through and you are using them in order to more greatly transform your life as well. So in the upright position, this card is really about intuitively listening to your emotions, to your heart, and to being receptive and open to those subconscious messages that may be coming through. And it may be a time as well of connecting more deeply with, um, with psychic abilities as well. And when um, we're looking at this card in the blocked position, it could be that we are sort of living in a world where we're acting without thinking or even a fantasy world where we're not really you know um, taking that intuition on board we're kind of twisting it so that it says what we want it to say rather than reality and that actually we need to have a bit more of a period of grounding um, not getting too wild or um, too lost in our own selves and it can also be a period of doubting our intuition as well depending on the circumstance. Okay, so now we are going to be moving on to the pip cards of the suit of cups, starting, of course, with the ten of cups. Now, the ten of cups is uh, the completion of a cycle, uh, which the number ten in tarot always represents. And this uh, number ten in particular is all about contentment. It's that idea of real joy and fulfillment, but particularly when it comes to emotional fulfillment. Um, and when we look at the artwork on the uh, Rider Waite Smith uh, deck, it is much more traditional. So it's that idea of a traditional nuclear family, man, woman, married, a boy and a girl um, with a you know a little house in the background, etc. But it doesn't have to mean that verbatim. Obviously, it's that idea of finding joy in the relationships that are around us that resonate rightly with us. It can be biological family or it can also be chosen family as well. But this is really a beautiful card about contentment, about feeling satisfied with our lives and also feeling a great appreciation as well, which is always a beautiful state to be in. And when we're looking at the Ten of Cups in the blocked position, it's that idea of we're not feeling fulfilled, um, that we are looking for something, but we still haven't found our pot of gold, emotionally speaking, at the end of the rainbow quite yet. Um, 
It could also be that idea that actually there is some active disharmony in a familial sense. So it could be with, again, biological or chosen family, whatever might be resonating at that time with the card. Um, it can also be a prompt that you need to actually appreciate what is going on around you at the moment rather than dwelling too much on the negative because sometimes appreciation comes when we dig in a little deeper and actually um, look for it actively rather than having it just be presented to us as the archetypal um, box ticking of everything that we want in life. So moving on, our next card is the Nine of Cups, um, or as I sometimes like to call it, the John Travolta card. <laughs> I don't know if that's just me, but whenever I see the little chap sitting in the centre, he always looks like uh, John Travolta to me. I think other people have kind of noticed that, um, that similarity as well. In any case, uh, the Nine of Cups is all about material pleasures. Um, so although the Nine of Cups more generally as a suit, um, sorry, just the suit of cups as a whole, more generally resonates with relationships and with the more emotional side of things, there is also that idea of materialism coming through. So material pleasure and it's that emotional feeling that we feel um, in those moments. It's like an emotional satisfaction, um, that sense of comfort and enjoyment that comes when we have a certain degree of material success. Um, so if you pull this card in the upright position for yourself or someone else, it could be this idea that they are or you are in a place of real uh, comfort, that you um, are enjoying a moment in time uh, where you're able to have satisfaction and balance emotionally and materially in your work, in your relationships, that things are going well. It can also call back to the lunar cycle and if you have set intentions that are now coming to fruition as well. And when this card comes up in the reverse position, it's that idea that actually we're kind of growing through a period of discomfort that things are going to get better, but that we've got to rework our intentions first in order to call in that growth. It's also that idea that actually maybe we are getting a bit stuck in our comfort zone and that that is limiting our ability to grow because we are um, identifying with pleasurable things, but they're just superficial. They're not actually taking us forward and progressing in the way that we want to in life. Moving on now, we have the Eight of Cups. And this card is moving away now from that sort of sense of positivity and emotional balance into a different sort of energy. And this card is really all about seeking. So it's a transition card. It's a night of emotional transition. We can see uh, the moon up in the top left hand corner is watching the figure as they're going off on a journey. We can see their staff, which is calling back to other figures that we've seen in the major arcana, such as the hermit. And we can see that the way that the cups have been arranged, that there is one cup missing. So it's that sense that we are looking for something, that we are withdrawing, that we're needing to take a period of soul searching in order to go into our subconscious to evolve and really go on our own inner journey. And when we're thinking about this cup in a, this cup, <laughs> this card in the reverse position, it's that sense of being stuck. So for whatever reason, we're not able to leave. It could be financially, it could be um, another responsibility is holding us back and we cannot leave or it could be that idea that we're sort of not aligning with where we are in our lives at the moment, that we're stuck in a job or in a relationship and we're not quite sure how to uh, recommit to ourselves and to our own journey and we're kind of staying in that in-between uh, phase at the moment. But it's that idea of sort of the dark night of the soul, of the moon. And when we look at the moon itself, it really makes us think back to the card of the moon in the major arcana with the way that the moon is watching over the figure with all these crags and rocks coming out of the water. We've got this clear indication that there is a pathway, that it's leading us somewhere, that it may not be um, a simple journey, but that it's something, you know, in the upright position that we are definitely being called to do. And even in a blocked position as well, that we're still being called to reconnect to that path. Okay, so moving on now to the Seven of Cups. This is a card that is all about choices. And I think that's probably very apparent with the way that the card itself is set out. We've got this black faceless figure, genderless figure, this kind of um, 
the inside of us, that inner shadow, looking out at this abundant choice of possibilities that lie before us. And we've got lots of um, uh, strange <laughs> sort of uh, items in the cups but those are not really relevant because what they're kind of trying to intimate to us when this card is in the upright position is that idea of possibilities but also that that is that kind of idea of illusion that sometimes the possibilities that we're looking for the choices that we're trying to make are not actually um, as real as we think they are that sometimes we're say falling in love with a situation or a person's potential rather than their reality but if this card comes up for you or someone else that you're reading for in the upright position it's really that idea of maybe looking at too many choices we're not sure what we want to pick you know um, that if this is a, a card that comes up for a future position that there's the idea that um things will become clear but at the moment there is an idea where there's a bit of confusion you know there are possibilities out there but we're still not sure which one to pick and actually in the reversed position this becomes clearer to us that there is a revealed purpose that we've um, put in that determination that we're going to discover what's right for us um, and that we are going to leave behind any daydreaming, any illusion, and we're really going to make um, the best decision possible. It can also mean, however, that you are making an unrealistic choice or hoping for an unrealistic choice in a period of feeling very overwhelmed. Um, so this will depend on what the question is that you or the querent are asking. So we move now on to the Six of Cups and this is a card all about memory and more deeply nostalgia and this to me is one of my least favourite cards that comes up in all of the Minor Arcana because for me personally I always feel that this card has a bit of a weird energy. So the two figures in the foreground are meant to be, from my understanding, children but to me they kind of have more of almost like a little goblin appearance, um, a bit like the film Don't Look Now, where you've got the, the creature that wears that red hood. And indeed, we can see one of the children is wearing a red hood as well. And I think when this card is coming up in the upright position, it is a um, an indicator, sorry, a signifier of memories of nostalgia. But it's also the idea that although... Um, we may be feeling positively towards this period of nostalgia, that there's also the idea that we are remembering it in a dreamlike state, that perhaps something that we remembered as a child is not actually how it was in the reality back then. And when we have this card in the reverse, that energy is much more apparent, where we're calling back to a period in the past that was either unhappy or that is now making us unhappy in the present, um, that there are unhealed wounds, that perhaps there is trauma that was um, taking place in a past uh, time that we are still trying to recover from now. Um, but overall, if this card does come up for you in the upright position, there is a lot of positivity um, uh, to it as well but it's that real idea that we need to pay attention to our memories and call in what is real about them and what is not and how is that informing on our present lives and our present choices as well. And moving on, we are now coming to the Five of Cups. And I think we can tell by uh, even just looking at this card, glancing at it for a moment, that this is a card with a very heavy emotional energy. And it's a card of sorrow. Uh, this card really does indicate a period of grief, of uh, loss, of needing to uh, get over something, of maybe regret or guilt. Um, it is a, a card sort of heavy with sadness, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, that it's in wholly uh, a negative card uh, because it really encourages us, us to dig deep and accept those feelings of grief and find a way to make them part of us and to move forward in a way that is healing and nurturing and positive as well. Um, and we can clearly see that there is a bridge over the water in the background and that there is a house waiting on the other side for this figure. So there is definitely a way out. We just have to find it. And when this card comes up in the reverse, it's really calling us to find that acceptance, to 
move away from pain and to dig deeper into our emotional growth. And if we look at the cups actually on the card, we can see that yes, three have been knocked over, their contents are on the ground, but then if the figure would only look behind them, they would be able to clearly see that actually there are two cups which haven't been knocked over, that are still intact, that are still full with potential waiting to help us to move forward um, into the next stage of our lives. Okay, just have a quick drink before we then move on to our next card. Put my coffee away. Okay, so the next card that we're going to come to is, of course, the Four of Cups. Um, and when we look at the energy of this card, the thing that we really want to remember and resonate is that idea of boredom or of stagnation particularly when it comes to emotional stagnation as well and it's that idea that um, we are kind of in a period where we're feeling a bit disillusioned um, so maybe we're kind of trying to disconnect ourselves because things aren't really going forward in the way that we would like them to either career-wise or in relationships and we're kind of st stuck we're, we're not really able to take advantage of the opportunities that are coming towards us because we've disconnected ourselves so much from those emotions and I think it's very easy that um, when we look at this card visually we can see that the figure is cross-armed cross-legged in a very blocked cut-off position yes there are three cups in front of them that are obviously not giving the figure what what they need but then there is also um, a cup very clearly being offered um, next to them and they're choosing to ignore that opportunity. And we can maybe think about Buddha as well, the way Buddha would sit under his tree contemplating truth and um, how he wanted to move forward. So periods of sol solitude can be helpful and they can really serve us, but we need to be mindful about them and to still be open to new opportunities. And when this card is in the uh, reverse position, it's the idea that we're coming to a breakthrough um, that we may have been afraid to fail, but we're now jumping back into it and we're going to go for it. Um, or it could still mean that we're in a period of apathy and withdrawal, but that we're really waiting for that moment to break back through and to have that period of emotional realisation. Moving on, now we come to the Three of Cups, and this is a card all about celebration. We can see the three figures clearly having a great old time. They're dancing around, they've got their cups in the air, it's a bit of a party. We can see on the ground that we've got these cornucopias everywhere. Everything is flourishing, it's joyful, and there's real expansive emotions going on here. And as well as being a celebratory card, it's that idea of celebrating with other people. So it's growing friendships, relationships, being part of your community and enjoying a degree of shared experiences. So when this comes up, it's that idea that things in your life are going to progress forward in terms of your support systems. So not just romantic relationships, but also friendships and communities as well. And it's also calling us to reach out to find those relationships as well if that's something that's kind of lacking in our lives at the moment. And when this card comes up in a reversed or blocked position, it's that idea that we're sort of growing apart from other people, that we're sort of on our own journey, that we're going solo at the moment. We're not necessarily wanting to connect with other people or it can also be a call to be more aware of your own personal boundaries you know maybe you've been putting yourself out there a bit too much for other people and actually you need to start conserving some of that energy for yourself um, in order to not um, you know damage damage yourself in the process but this is a really lovely card all about celebrating and you know partying and having a good time and moving through uh, the suit of cups we now come to the two of cups and the number two in tarot as we've spoken about previously is all about choices and this is a card about the commitment involved in choices and when we look at this card we can see immediately the very clear parallels to the card of the lovers in the major arcana um, and it's that idea of um, coming together in a union in order to then create a better connection and we can see in the um, the very center of the card we've got the ancient symbol for healing we've got a lion with wings and lions were all about um, earthly things and then wings obviously about the spirit 
So it's that real idea of things coming and connecting. So that heart connection that is helping us to balance our relationships. Um, so if this card comes up, not necessarily in a romantic reading, even in a work reading, it could still be a very positive sign that there is going to be um, a great relationship or union going forward, um, that you have affinity for another person, that there is a great partnership going on. So it could even be uh, pertinent to friendship as well. And then when this card comes up in the reverse, it's that idea that actually maybe there is a conflict going on or a separation or even simply that um, the person that you are speaking about, either if you were the querent yourself or if it's someone else, that idea that actually two people may not be compatible. So if you're asking about going into um, a business with someone or whether to continue on in a friendship where perhaps there's been some tension, if this card comes up in the reverse, it could be the idea that actually um, these two things are just not compatible in terms of their core values, which is obviously just something that happens in life. Um, but this card is all about choices. So be aware of that when it comes up, whether in the upright or blocked position. And moving on to our final card, we have the Ace of Cups. And this is a card that is all about love. And especially when it comes to uh, new starts in relationships, whether it's with yourself or with someone else. But it's really that idea of new life, of rebirth, of coming into a new emotional state. And when we look at the card visually, we can see that absolute abundance of love, of water, is overflowing from this golden chalice. We can see that uh, there's the wafer and the cross that the dove is depositing almost like um, the holy grail or taking communion and we can see that the uh, leaves of the tree of life are also falling um, into the water as well so we've got all this really positive um, visual symbolization that we are abundant abundant in love and we've got that lovely um, overflowing feeling of emotions that are carrying us through um, this fresh start um, and we can really see that sort of abundant power that water has you know we've got the five fountains of water coming out signified signifying sorry the abundant power of the five seas so it's a very positive card when this is coming up in the upright position and then when this card comes up in the blocked position, it's the idea of your cup is half full, that you're maybe resisting a period of renewal, that there is a degree of emotional blockage going on, or um, that we're not really fully um, allowing ourselves to enjoy the blessings that are already available to us in our lives, uh, which is a bit of a common theme with the suit of cups, um, that in the upright position, we've got a lot of very positive, intuitive, loving, emotional energy. And then when the cards are coming up blocked, it's that idea that we're cutting ourselves off from that emotional life, um, that we've got these emotional blockages going on. Um, but this is the final card that we're going to enjoy today for the suit of cups um, about relationships and love. Okay, so that is the suit of cups done. I hope you found that helpful. Um, and next time we're going to be looking at uh, the suit of swords. Mm -hmm.